invariable rule of humanity is that man is his own worst enemy. Under me, this rule will change, for I Hello. will restrain man. To help carry on our important work, I want you to join the secret squadron. To join the secret squadron. To join the secret squadron. Welcome back. Welcome back to In Chronicles. Happy Tuesday unto you. So if you can recall last week's topic, we were in part two of the old, the whole uh, science of polyamorous or being polyamorous. And uh, here's, here's a little bit of where we left off. Their, their pretense was that you were an escort and that it was their duty to pay you at the end. Where in my situation, that's not, that's not the case. And now here we go, continuing on with part three. Let's do this. Yeah, yeah, I guess, it, yeah, it was. It, it, yeah, you're right. Yeah, it does, it does boil down to a mindset. And speaking of mindset, I know this is going to be a crazy question to some, but maybe not to others. Where does confidence play a part in being polyamorous? Because um, that's what I'm smelling out. Everything you're saying is just confidence as a foundation. But yeah. uh, in your terms. <laughs> Confidence matters in any, you know, a lot of times when people uh, have a sense of wanting to separate poly from polyamory from monogamy. I have to say that sometimes because I see, I just, you know, people in the community just say poly, you know what we're talking about. But, uh, but, but polyamory and monogamy is so much alike that we fall into this trap of, of trying to separate them. I mean, a, a, a polyamorous relationship taught me how to have better relationships because now I've realized that uh, communication is very important in relationships. Whereas in a monogamous relationship, everything's assumed. Um, we just assume a regular relationship when it, the, the, the truth of the matter is no two relationships are alike. But we just go in with the default idea of what a relationship is supposed to be like. And that was learned by possibly our parents or somebody in our family or someone close to us gave us an example of a relationship that we felt to ourselves we wanted to be a part of. Um, and then we go into the next relationship, not discussing that and just assuming that that's what's gonna show them what a, a healthy relationship is like. You know, this example that they had when everybody's different. So- That's true, that's true. So I don't like to, so confidence, confidence, confidence is across the board in any type of relationship, even a business relationship. Somebody wants to see someone confident. If you come into a business meeting and you're telling me about your great idea, but you can't be so zealous about it. So like, I love this idea. You, this is going to knock you off your socks. This is great. If you come in and go, well, you know, I got this idea. I don't know what you're going to think about it. You know, I know over here, I probably need to fix this. And this ain't so great. Of, you know, it's the same shit. You know, if you're not confident going into that room, people are going to second guess you and not uh, be willing to follow you. They you know, not willing to take your lead. But if you seem like a confident person who's ready to take, you know, show the way and lead and, and be uh, direct about stuff, then you got people who are more willing to be a part of what you're a part of. So it definitely requires, uh, well, no, in your case, because I, I keep trying to generalize polyamorous being polyamorous, but we're talking you doing it so that other people can see and can, can comment on how they do it if they're about that and they might not even know that that's what they're about like you were in your early stages they might not know that that's what it's all about you know which is why i'm doing this but um shit, i forgot where i was going with that uh oh essentially you have to be a good marketer and a good salesman in order to do what it is how you're doing it um because i'm what i'm hearing is you're pitching yourself to the two perspective people, perspective women, I should say. And if they run with it, cool. If they don't, you're cool with that as opposed to saying, oh, well, you wasn't all that anyway. It's just a thing of, well, okay, well, you're just not somebody that's going to be a part of my tribe, my harem, so to speak. Right. Okay. So yeah, yeah. And, and it goes, like you, you hit the nail on the head and uh, Zig Ziglar, I think, a lot of, some people know who this is Zig Ziglar and some people don't. But Zig Ziglar put it this way, we're always in sales. He yep. said, at any point, we're selling ourselves. So at that moment, I'm in there, I'm selling myself, and I'm not a hard seller. 
me, I'm a soft salesperson. You know, I'll let you know what the benefits are. <laughs> and you can decide whether those benefits are appropriate for you. And if they're not, I'm not going to try and create some different benefits to make you want my product. My benefits are the benefits. You know, if you don't like what I'm selling you, then find it someplace else that you're looking for. But here's what I have. Either you like it or you don't. Yeah. So, so let me see. So it's hit or miss. It's hit or miss in those cases, and you're and you're fine with it. You're fine. Yeah, of course, I okay. can't. You know, here's a, here's a here's a trap I think for anybody is to go in and really like with the eBay mentality since you brought up eBay, and here's this item up for auction, and because everybody else wants this item, you will keep bidding on it and bidding it up and up and up that you have actually paid more than it's worth at the store brand new with warranty and guarantees. So, <laughs> you know, so because you see this thing and you feel like you have to win, you go in there and you offer more than you're willing to. So if I go in there and I say, hey, this is what I have to offer, you take it or leave it, some are gonna take it and some are gonna leave it. And I could be okay with that because at the end of the day, I don't wanna offer more than I'm willing to. Okay, let me touch on that soft sell thing. So have you ever come across somebody that was so hot, so fly, that you went in on a hard sell? Or is everybody the same as far as you're concerned? <laughs> so again, we're going to end it right there. Nice little cliffhanger for you. Tune in next Tuesday where we're talking with a dick, to a dick, however you want to put it. See me next week. We'll continue on. Because, yeah, there's more to it. There's more to it. And with that, I say, later. This concludes the broadcast concludes from the broadcast. World Control. World Control. Yeah, let's pretend like this never happened. Look, I don't like having to trust anyone because I'm always disappointed. But just once I'd like to know that I could actually trust someone. That for at least one person, everything wasn't about money or power.